Stephen Chow is one of Hong Kong's biggest film stars, and he is undoubtedly one of my favorite comedians. He's the actor director behind some of the funniest and silliest scenes in recent movies. How he got here requires a bit of explaining. The martial arts genre, made famous by Bruce Lee in his Hong Kong movies, was given a comedic twist by the character pioneered by Jackie Chan. Here, you see a martial arts master who learned the art of fighting drunkenly. Stephen Chow took many of the comedic ideas further. He took martial arts to places where it did not belong. His films also found ways to export the conventions of the genre, like the relationship between master and pupil, to other storylines. Here, an acting teacher tries to teach a young man how to act like a gangster. Chow explored alternative uses of kung fu, as he took kung fu's comedic potential to its absolute limit. It's useful to see where Chow's films belong in the context of developments in Hong Kong cinema. Chow's heyday in the 1990s and early 2000s marked the tail end of Hong Kong cinema's boom years, in which filmmakers like John Woo and Wong Kar Wai came to the world's attention. Stephen Chow carved out a niche here as a kind of an auteur of toilet jokes, silly gags, and action comedies, eventually becoming the city's favorite comedian. In his films, Chow played the everyman, who despite his flaws and self-obsession, eventually achieved success. What distinguishes his films from Jackie Chan's is, first and foremost, their differing attitudes towards martial arts-based stunts. Jackie Chan prided himself in taking acrobatic stunts to their absolute limit. Chow, on the other hand, chose to ignore rules of physics altogether in pursuit of comedy. I've heard Stephen Chow described as Jackie Chan on acid. I think that's appropriate. Furthermore, there is a unifying theme to Chow's storylines in a way there simply is not in Jackie Chan's movies. Chow's movies often tell of the little guy taking on the big bad world using inadequate, often outmoded means. His movies are essentially David vs. Goliath tales, in which the little man takes on the world in funny, ridiculous ways. If all this sounds familiar, that's because it should be. It's an old formula often used in classic comedies. Comedians like Charlie Chaplin told stories about men out of place in the modern world. Jacques Tati did too, taking slapstick to a whole nother place, with his nearly speechless, mumbling characters. Stephen Chow builds on this tradition. It's funny to see people try to take on the modern world using improper means. If you focus on the martial arts aspect of his films, you'll probably see Stephen Chow as a successor to Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, and I think that's valid. But I'd argue that he's as much of an inheritor of the great slapstick tradition as he is of the martial arts tradition. Like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Jacques Tati, Stephen Chow lets us imagine a world in which the little man, despite his outmoded and strange ways, wins. I think that's why he was so popular not just in Hong Kong, but also all around East Asia in a time of great economic and social change. Chow's movies enabled audiences to escape to a world in which the outcomes were different from those that you saw in real life. There's something satisfying about that. And in the process of creating these comedies, Stephen Chow took slapstick and physical comedy to a whole nother dimension. Quite literally. I think there's something amazing about that.